Cyprus, the most easterly island in the Mediterranean, with a 9,000 year history of colonization. An island of beauty and contrast, a melting pot of multiple influences at the intersection of both Orient and Occident. Lefkosia, or Nicosia, is completely surrounded by walls. Famagusta Gate is the entrance to the district of Tacht el Kala, with its many narrow alleys, small buildings and handicraft studios. The Icon Museum and the old Orthodox John Cathedral form the frame of the central Macaria Square. Our most interesting old middle-class building in the town is the house of Haji Georgiakis Conisius. And recalling Ottoman times is the Oraya Hammam and a mosque of the same name. The bustling pedestrian area with attractive promenade represents today's modern city. The largest church is the Panaramini Church. Next to it, one of the town's smallest mosques, and Paphos Gate leads out of the historic center. The port of Lanaka is considered to be the gateway to the island. A well-renovated Turkish fortress was originally built here to defend the city. Just behind, the Jami Kabir Mosque. And the old quarter with its houses and shops. The dominant Lazarus Cathedral rises from the town center. One of the oldest historic monuments in Larnaca with a fascinating history. It was thought to have been built by the Byzantine Emperor Leo VI above the empty grave of Lazarus. Ancient remains lie beneath the Larnaca of today. In the summer months, visitors enjoy the sea, sand and the promenade. The old warehouses are now home to museums and art galleries. And in the new marina, various craft lie at anchor. Ayanapa, the southeastern corner of Cyprus. Once a small fishing settlement, today a lively tourist resort. A picturesque 16th century monastery is situated in the center of the town with an arcaded Venetian courtyard and Gothic pointed arches that date back to the Crusades. An octagonal fountain exudes southern charm, decorated with elaborate relief heads and garlands. Above all, these dream beaches attract hordes of tourists, a paradise for sun worshippers, and a hotspot of the nocturnal club scene. West from Larnaca in the village of Kiti is one of the island's oldest churches. Panagia Angeloctistos, built by angels. The ancient mosaic of Maria Horigatria and other icons are among Cyprus' greatest art treasures. The nearby Cape Kiti and its lighthouse are located at the extreme tip of the island. This part of the coast evokes the past of former conquerors, traders and pilgrims.
In the center of the island is Cyprus' oldest monastery, which is located on a prominent mountain cone which rises 768 meters from the coastal plain. The Stavrovone Monastery, in which women are prohibited. The mother of Emperor Constantine landed here with sections of the Cross of Christ. A dream told her to build a monastery on the summit of this mountain and leave the sections of the cross as a relic. The mountain village of Lefkara is situated within the foothills of the Trudos Mountains. Around the church of the Archangel Michael, narrow and cobbled alleys separate the stately buildings of solid stone blocks. For centuries, the women have skillfully produced traditional white embroidery. And the men have specialized in the processing of silver. In the eastern part of Trudos, two hermits from Palestine founded the Machiras Monastery in 1148. An ancient icon that is almost entirely covered in silver and whose discovery led to the foundation of the monastery hangs gracefully on the iconostasis. One of the two hermits injured himself in a fall, drank from a source that was adorned with this Marian icon and was immediately healed. And the belief in this power of miracles remains unbroken right up until today. On the southern Mediterranean coast, in Akrotiri Bay, are the ruins of Amatus, one of the island's early city kingdoms. The town was an important Phoenician outpost in numerous countries in the east, and it was also the birthplace of St. John, the founder of the Order of St. John. Only after the destruction wrought by Richard the Lionheart was the city finally abandoned. With the end of Amatus, the nearby Lemisos or the Limassol of today gained further importance, and it still possesses the island's most important harbour. When the Knights of St. John were finally driven from the Holy Land, they first landed in Cyprus. The fort was situated directly on the coast and was rebuilt by the Templars following its destruction in the 13th century. The Order of Templars set up its headquarters here. The massive construction of the Napa Ayo Church dominates the old town, and the pedestrian zone provides interesting shops, restaurants, and street cafes. The city is changing more and more into a modern city, and the palm lined promenade is great for fishing. The monumental Colossi Castle, within its plantations grow fruit, sugarcane, olive groves and vineyards. Rugged stone walls protected from both hostilities and extreme temperatures. The inhabitants lived on the upper two floors. Sixty villages and their inhabitants belong to the order. In an adjoining sugar mill, the sugar cane was pressed and sugar produced, which was then transported to Venice. Curion, one of the most interesting archaeological sites on the south coast, an ancient ruined city of huge dimensions. 
massive roof covers the large area of the Eustolios. Also a huge theater and massive stone buildings that were destroyed by a devastating earthquake. The monumental Christian basilica, the Forum Romanum, and the public baths with their underfloor heating. The Apollo Halatis sanctuary lies outside the ancient city. Further west, several picturesque rocks emerge from the sea. Here, a myth was born. Petra to Romeo. It is said that here Aphrodite once stepped out of the foaming waves. In ancient times, Paphos was for 600 years the capital of Cyprus and an archaeological location that became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Pallia Paphos was situated on the plateau of a limestone hill and contains the sanctuary of Aphrodite. In the 12th century, the Frankish Lusignan dynasty successfully established a feudal system and in addition to the construction of several castles and cathedrals, Paphos became an administrative center. Like a fortress, the building is situated in a prominent location. And near to the medieval buildings, the small Catholic church became the main church of the area. Paphos city was developed for tourism. Here, ancient and contemporary times unite harmoniously, with a fortress next to the harbor. The beach promenade lies in front of a large district that contains various hotels, restaurants, cafes and shops. A fascinating place. Most of the inhabitants live in the upper town of Katima that was built on a plateau. And the colorful hustle and bustle of the market offers much southern flair. Here, there are small gardens and parks, colonial buildings and churches. And the view from here is quite splendid. Today, Kato Paphos is an archaeological site. The spacious landscaped Roman atrium villas and their wonderful mosaics that depict numerous Greek legends are among the most valuable of their kind. The Greek Macedonian Ptolemaic kings, who resided in Egyptian Alexandria, selected Paphos as the capital of the island, and it remained so under subsequent Roman governance. Its prosperity continued until the 4th century, when it was struck by a powerful earthquake. The underground tombs of the kings of Paphos survived, but no regents were buried here, only the wealthy and high officials of the former Ptolemaic administration. Steps lead down to the inner courtyards of the peristyle tombs, carved out of the reddish rock and which rise from the waterfront and overlook the sea. The village of Ember is one of the island's 50 excavation sites. Since 1976, archaeologists from Edinburgh University in the UK have been excavating a small village in this location. Circular huts of a Bronze Age settlement have been built upon the original foundations. 
The walls consist of bricks made of mud and straw, and the ceilings of wood. The walls were painted with basic, natural colorings both inside and out, and red ornaments decorated the primeval dwellings. In the heart of the island is Trudos with its vine-growing region. Cyprus was one of the first countries in which grapes were cultivated to produce wine. Settlers introduced vines from the mainland. Here the climate, location and composition of the soil each favor the growing of vines, which is why this region has been well known as a classic vine-growing region since the dawn of time. Journeying across the Trudos Mountains again and again are small monasteries such as that of Ayamoni. The interior of the church contains more religious jewelry, but in a newer version. Vineyards and cedar forests surround this monastery near to Chrysa Royatissa, founded in 1192 by the hermit Ignatius. Industry's wine cellars have won many international awards. It's a wonderful location and the high quality of the wine made the monastery famous. When this award-winning wine is served, it can be well and truly enjoyed with a well-deserved toast to the monks. The village of Amodos is located in a vineyard on a hillside across from Pano Platras. The older villagers have grown accustomed to visitors and they often rush in groups across the most beautiful town square in Cyprus. In the center of the village is the no longer inhabited Timiu Stavros Monastery. It was restored in 1994. The women sit in the alleys and work diligently at their speciality, a modos lace. And several villagers have arranged their houses, traditionally built of rough stone, as living museums. The Akamas Peninsula forms the western region of Cyprus. In this nature reserve grow more than 500 kinds of plants. According to legend, it was here that Adonis met the goddess of love Aphrodite and duly fell in love with her. The rugged cliffs against which the waves of the Mediterranean break, with foam splashing up the rocks, is an untouched coastal landscape. The washed out sandstone rock features the primeval history of the island, when the Trudos was under the sea of Tithis. Within the Zeros Valley, several Venetian bridges indicate a former ancient camel route that led through the valley. Copper ore from the mines of Trudos was transported to Paphos on the coast and from there was shipped abroad. Kikos is located some distance from the nearest village and is situated on the mountain of the same name in the Trudos. Even at the main entrance, golden, shining mosaics adorn the walls. The entire monastery complex looks like a fortress. 
In 1998, a splendid sacred museum was inaugurated here that exhibits numerous works of precious art. The Panagia is entered from a second inner courtyard. The iconostasis of this small monastery church are amongst the most splendid and precious of the Greek Orthodox world. The Trudos, a remote, almost inaccessible area that became a hiding place for persecuted Christians and a secure storage place for works of art that were endangered by iconoclasm. Padulas, a small village in the Maratatha region, contains the Archangel Michael Church. From the outside, it looks like a simple barn, but inside, there are Byzantine wall paintings in a flaming abundance of color. And in a museum, sacred art treasures are stored. Located on a rock in the nearby village of Mutulus is another ancient church. The area boasts the fact that it took in the apostles Barnabas and Paul. This, the most remote village of the region, contains the Ayas Janus Lambadistas Monastery. The monastery was probably built towards the end of the Venetians' governance, and the church complex consists of three churches of different ages. The Solia region boasts further picturesque churches. Their main church remained preserved until today, the Ayas Nikolaos Tistegas Church. At the lower end of Gilata is the inconspicuous Panagia Porito Church, another barn roof church with brick built pitched roof. The small church of St. Mary of Asinu is totally inconspicuous on a small plateau just outside the village. This church is also part of the precious heritage of church culture, and the magnificent frescoes of the church's interior are a fine example of Byzantine art. In Lagodera, a large barn roof protects the Panagia to Araka church. Here once gathered the first people beyond Palestine and the Holy Land who discovered the Holy Gospel. Outside Platanistata, the Stavros to Aismati church stands alone within the wooded mountain scenery. In Orthodox Christianity, the figures were meant to depict images of a true archetype of a divine and holy nature, not one created by man. Amid vineyards, Palakori contains the Metamorphosis to Sotiru Church. In dignified pose, a monk watches over the well-preserved early 16th century frescoes. Finally, the tiny Timios Stavros church, set in the natural surroundings of the village of Perendri. Here, a tumultuous past and a glorious history accompanied the guardians of both faith and tradition. The Island of the Gods is like an open-air museum of history, with countless colorful testimonies of the past. Cyprus, an island world with fascinating landscapes and unique historical treasures. A place where summer lasts forever.